Oh, it's the big break semi-final night. Three contestants this evening. Only one of them is going through to tomorrow's final. Our judges this evening, just to remind you, Edward Roderick, co-chairman of Investors Mina, and this evening, NASA. Al Madani, Assistant Director General at Dubai Airport Free Zone Authority. Gentlemen, thanks very much indeed for listening to the presentations of our contestants, both their turnaround strategy for the New York Times and also a little bit about their own businesses here in the UAE. Nasser Al Madani, I'm going to turn to you first, ask you for your, your brief thoughts, your helicopter view of Mohammed Kazem and a link personal assistant, both the way he handled the New York Times scenario and also his own organisation. Well, uh, first let me say, uh, say that Muhammad, I was impressed with his enthusiasm. I think he's got entrepreneurship in, in him. Uh, however, he, with regard to the strategy to turn around uh, the, the New, York, uh, New York Times, uh, it was very general and uh, focused on cost a little bit, but not really focused on increasing the revenue to that extent. But overall, overall, I think he, he, did, he did very well. And your thoughts on his own business, a link personal assistant? Well, uh, again, this is a very good, good model. Uh, I think he filled the gap in the, in the market. He understood that there is a need for this. So the, the, there is a creativity into, in, 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 in what he's providing. And uh, he's a startup. He's, he's approaching the business quite logically with, with uh, you know, reasonable price that, that would attract uh, uh, customers in the beginning. So I think, I think it was, he was fine in that. So. Edward, same question to you. Ed, uh, Ma- Mohammed Kazem, I think, a personal assistant. Well, first of all, I, I think it's, uh, it's difficult to be critical of any of them. The amount of research work that they've done and the effort they put into these things, I think, is, is very good. But if I, if I were to approach it, I have very much similar views to my colleague um, I felt that the focus was very much on the on the project team but without a lot of detail about what they would do inside the New York Times um, uh, and really didn't address much uh, in my view about how the competition uh, had approached this issue and therefore what his strategies would be for generating revenue and his own business um, the, the the link personal assistant company itself I think it's a it's a creative uh, business that he's created, and and also I think uh, plays a little bit to busy executives. But I think it's very much a high end model type activity. I, I wasn't convinced by the economic model uh, itself because it's heavily reliant upon the fact that people underutilize the time that's allocated to them, and therefore the profitability for me could be very very variable, dependent upon how much people. Uh, clicked into the idea that they've underutilised their hours. Let's look at our second contestant this evening, Deviani Dayal, She Moves Company. At NASA Al Madani, first of all, your thoughts on her NYT presentation and her own business. Well, with, with regard to Daviani, uh, I was very happy with how she approached NYT. He, she immediately went into saying that monetizing the website, and that's where she saw the money, the revenue would come from in the future. Uh, and she was very clear also in following another strategy of going in, uh, into local languages to attract more readership. Uh, so I think that she, was her she plan to well. translate the International Herald Tribune into local languages Ex- around the world. Exactly, Edward. Yeah, my view was I thought it was a brilliant analysis. She focused very much as as has been identified on the opportunity by by translation into other languages of drawing more people into the readership itself. She dealt with the issue of going from a, a, a broadsheet business and bringing it down into more readable format. She focused heavily on the revenue side with the pay-per-click idea and she clearly identified as well that the family influence had been negative on the business in that it was just a little bit too old-fashioned in its approach. And I thought that was all very good stuff. And Jens, your thoughts on her own business, She Moves, the, the clothing business. Edward, first of all. I think uh, she's in a sector where it's difficult to differentiate in, in that market. Um, it, in order to be competitive, you've constantly got to redesign and update the products that you're engaging in. Um, but I actually think that it's the way the clothes are moving. People are becoming and mixing up their day wear with their sport wear more. And I think her idea of, of including... All, sh- all shapes and sizes of girls into being able to wear this clothing. It was a very good idea. And uh, yeah. Nasser, your thoughts? I, I agree uh, with Ed- Edward most of what he said. She has chosen a very, very tough line. 
uh, I think there will be a, there are a lot of clothing in in a sporting and you know to to make her way in that market is not very easy. I think she had experience with the dance clothing not doing very well, so she's moving into the the, the sporting. It's it's not it's not an easy market to do. The, the idea is good, but it's, it will be a very tough tough uh, market for her. So Nasa Almadali, let's move on to our third contestant this evening. We just heard from her, Jill Gordon Keep and Works Interior, the interior design and fit out company. First of all, the way she approached the New York Times scenario. Uh, well, Jill, she approached very similar to the other two contestants by focusing on the digital media. And uh, she clearly said that, yes, it's time to move more into the digital media. media. And she also said that uh, there are opportunities to make money out of the, of the, of the digital media. Uh, she was not very specific on the actions to be taken and how to do that. Edward. Again, I agree with, with most of those comments. She focused initially, I thought, on increasing the costs in the business by getting a number two. Why do you need a, no, a, a new number two when you're a new number one? So increasing the cost of being CEO by having a number two immediately was, was not for me. Um, assume that the print was basically dead or not really going to go anywhere and didn't have any s- statistical backup to go with that. I got the idea of charging but not really um, uh, focused enough on the advertising and the uh, demographics and could have spent a bit more time, I think, on the competitors. And finally, her own business works interior based here in the UAE. Edward, first of all. Well, she's clearly done something wonderful in that business in getting 400% growth one year and 20% the other and recognising early on that the business was suffering in the, in the downturn and moving it forward. The sales turnover is is big and the profitability is very good. But I think she found it difficult to articulate what it was that differentiated her in the marketplace um, and was difficult for me to understand what I was going to get from her from the sales pitch that she was asked to do. And N- uh, Nasser, your yeah, thoughts? I, I totally agree with the, with my colleague here. Uh, it's 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 a you know it's established business and she's providing exactly what other interior decorators are providing, so she probably will have difficulty in in convincing the customers in what the selling their her selling advantage or competitive advantage would be. Listen, I'm going to go to the SMSs now. Thank you to our judges. We have had so many. Thank you so much. Rich and varied. Big fans for all three contestants. Got to tell you, here's one. A link is the clear winner. Thank you very much indeed. Someone else writes in, great candidates, but particularly impressed with Jill. Thought the judges asked her very challenging questions and she answered them very well. Someone else writes in, uh, Miss Deviani did a stellar job, but I loved her sincerity and confidence. She's extremely knowledgeable. So we've had big fans of all of them. That, that is one thing to say. More specifically, uh, someone writes in, Yogi writes in, um, all of them focus too much for the New York Times situation on the internet and online. He says, I don't think print is dead. There are a lot of markets where print is not dead. There's still life in the old dog yet. And, and don't don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Any reaction to that, NASA? The thought that print isn't yet dead, that you, you particularly in, in some markets? Well, certainly print is not dead yet. There are still... Probably not only the older generation, but probably even some of the new generation will still like to read the printed the printed news, and the printed. Well, certainly on the magazine side, the print is not dead. If maybe on the newspaper, it's a little bit less. Yeah. And someone else writes in. They all want to make money online, but look at Facebook. Even it's struggling to make money online. Edward. Yeah, I think this is the big issue. Everybody's going onto the internet, and, and clearly, you know, technology is the way forward, and we're all going to live with that. But actually getting around to monetizing it um, is proving to be difficult for a, a lot of businesses and a lot of industries. Whereas, strangely enough, print media still has a long way to go. The clever companies have actually changed the format of their papers in order to attract a lot more readership in with a broader base to it all. And that will be the, the, the way to go forward. Someone writes in, um, quite critical, I thought all of the candidates were very generic in their analysis of the New York Times and a little bit all over the place with their strategy. Do you think that's fair or a little bit harsh, Edward, first of all, very quickly? 48 hours, a business they don't know an awful lot about, uh, a management team who've been there full-time and have failed and haven't got it right. We're asking people to come up with solutions that 
professional executives couldn't. Even I Murdoch think, can't crack this I, one. Can I, th- I think you can be overly critical sometimes. <laughs> no, sir. That's totally, that's totally right. I mean, we have to consider that they only had 48 awards and they only had limited information. And, and it, you know, to turn around the company, you probably use lots of consultants and, you know, and people who've been in the company for a very, very long time. So we have to appreciate that, that they cannot be very specific and they have to be generic. On that. Listen, three great contestants, but only one of them can go through from the semi-final to tomorrow final we're going to find out who that will be in just a couple of moments time